Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, great to have you with us on the program. Not All Who Wonder, Stories of Hope for Families Facing Alzheimer's and Dementia is a concise guide to navigating the heartbreaking challenges of having a loved one diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease or other dementias. Through a rich trove of stories culled from her years in elder care profession, author Lisa Skinner offers insights into the difficult questions that families face. Lisa is a behavioral expert in the field of Alzheimer's disease and related dementia. She's helped thousands of families find the best care options for their loved ones in her 20-year career as a community counselor and regional director of senior care facilities. She holds an administrator's license through the California Department of Social Services, a trainer, advisor, and public speaker who has dedicated her career to teaching people the skills to effectively manage brain disease Lisa Skinner, author of Not All Who Wander Need to Be Lost, Stories of Hope for Families Facing Alzheimer's and Dementia, and she's our guest on This Week in America. Lisa, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Well, thank you for having me. I'm uh, uh, very thrilled to be here. Well, I'm delighted that you're spending some time with us. This is such an important topic and one that you've really had uh, a front row seat for, like I said, the last 20 years. And the book uh, is a reflection of all the 20 years experience uh, come across in the chapters in the book. Talk about the decision to write the book, because this book has been and will continue to be so helpful for, for so many people. Why did you decide to write the book? It's kind of an interesting story what that trigger was. I uh, had my own business. I had a consulting business and a placement business, so I was um, always offering advice and information and education to family members about uh, the disease that was causing the dementia, and then also uh, if they needed help placing their loved one in a care facility, then I was instrumental in helping them with that. So I was called over to um, a client's house, and her father had been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, and her husband's mother had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. So they had both parents at the same time that they were dealing with, and they really just wanted me to come over so they could get some advice and get some guidance. And they were asking me a lot of different questions, and I was answering the questions. And about two and a half hours later, the, the woman said to me, she says, you know, Lisa, you've been here for about two and a half hours, and I honestly need to tell you, you've given us more hope and more information in the last two and a half hours than we have gotten from any other resource, including our doctors, in the last couple of years, and it's been so frustrating. This information is just not readily available out there. And she says, you should write a book. People <laughs> are desperate for this information. Yes. And so I did. And <laughs> I here is the book. A couple of years, yeah, and wrote the book because what she said was um, what my experience had been as well, that people just, there's such a, a limited amount of information on the psychosocial aspect of this disease where, you know, what are my, what, what should I expect? What are the day-to-day -day challenges? So that was the trigger for me writing the book, even though I knew that um, people did we're hungry for the information. Well, the book is a very concise guide. It covers a number of areas, which we'll talk about as best we can during the course of the program. The book is Not Who Wander Need Be Lost, Stories of Hope for Families Facing Alzheimer's and Dementia. And you start right off in Chapter 1. We understand for you this is personal. If we're reading the book, chances are we have a loved one impacted by Alzheimer's. You went through the similar emotions that that everyone who else has gone through. Talk about that. Chapter one is birds in a mattress, and you had an experience with, with your grandmother. And this sort of set the stage for who you became professionally. Correct. And I dedicated the book to her. She was the, 
the true first experience I had dating back to my teenage years is when um, my family was dealing with this. And back then, you didn't even talk about it, let alone get be able to get information. So um, that's a true story about some of the behaviors and the challenges we faced with my grandmother. But since then, I personally have had eight of my own family members with some form of dementia, not all blood-related. Some were blood relatives and some were through marriage or other relatives. But I, you know, this, this hits me close to home. And um, in addition to the eight family members, I've, you know, worked with hundreds and hundreds of families who are dealing with this on a daily basis and they just don't know where to turn. And the place to turn to get so many of the answers you have is Lisa's book, Not Who Wonder Need Be Lost. In the case of your grandmother, she's driving, she's had some problems, becomes disoriented in traffic, a four-lane highway, I believe, and the police officer stops and intervenes and brings her home. And he says basically what when she came home, and you're a teenager, I, I think at the time, your grandmother is a nut. I mean, that's how it, it obviously was handled at that time. It was. She, the, the police department tracked down my mother because not only did she stop her car in the middle of traffic, she thought she was in a parking lot, but she had been calling the police on a regular basis, telling them that that men were breaking into her house and there were birds living in her mattress and there were rats running all over the house. And they finally tracked down my mother and they said to her, and I was standing, I was right there, you've got to do something with this woman. We cannot keep getting these phone calls from her. She's a nut. And I can't tell you how many times I have heard that term used for people who are suffering from this brain disease. And I always have to remind people, this is not a mental illness. This is a brain disease. This is a degenerative, progressive disease that is damaging the brain cells and impacting different regions of the brain and the behaviors that we see associated with the damage that's being caused to the brain is a direct result of this disease. Your loved one, the person you care for, is not crazy. You're seeing the effects of the disease. So that's first and foremost. You talk in the book about because you've seen it, you know firsthand what works and what doesn't work. What are some of the misconceptions out there, the things that don't work, and maybe in some doctor's offices they're, they're still practicing? I think the... Number one observation that I've made over the years is people's lack of understanding of what's happening to their loved one during the stages of this disease. And it's a long, long, drawn-out process. With my grandmother, for example, this was over a span of 20 years. And most people are actually are not diagnosed with a form of dementia, Alzheimer's being the most common form of dementia, until the mid-stages because the, the symptoms that are displayed in the early stages are subtle. And a lot of people, by the time they're obvious and they take their loved one to the doctor and the uh, diagnosis is made, they kind of think back, and I'm um, one of them, yes, there were signs of some cognitive decline, but it wasn't that obvious or that blatant. But now that we think about it, yes, it started a long time ago. So um, kind of to circle back around to answer your question, I think um, when, when people have a better understanding of what's happening to their loved one in the different stages, then um, in the training as to how to respond to these behaviors because in my training, my education, and my experience, a lot of the responses are really counterintuitive. They're not, the, the responses to things like not remembering that you're 
spouse has passed away or not remembering what day of the week it is or not remembering that you just asked me that question um, 20 times in the last five minutes, the natural response is to correct the person. Oh, Mom, don't you remember? You just asked me that question. Or, Mom, don't you remember? Dad died five years ago. The responses, um, the correct responses to minimize um, agitation and um, panic and things like that are counterintuitive. And that's what I train people to do is how to best respond so they will, will help the person, ease the person without um, causing agitation and panic. Yeah, a part of the book talks about the stages of progression of Alzheimer's disease and related dementias, and it's a, it's a very important part of the book, as are all of the chapters. It's really well laid out, and one of the questions so many parents have, uh, family members have, is, am I abandoning my parent if I place them in the care of professionals? There's a certain guilt that comes at that stage when you feel, I need to do this, but yet there's a, there's a hesitance, or a reluctance. Talk about how you deal with that. Well, I'll give you a really good example because it happened in my own family with my mother-in-law. Um, we were a divided family. Um, a couple of us were in the we think it's the best place for her camp. And then there were a couple of siblings who thought that was going to be just a terrible, um, horrible thing to do to their mother. So one of the sisters stayed home and became her full-time caregiver, and she basically was just sitting in a chair watching TV all day, and she put on a lot of weight, and finally the sisters came around because she, uh, my mother-in-law, Mary Ann, she's in the book as well, um, she got to the point where she needed 24-hour a day, seven-day-a-week um, care and full care as she progressed through the disease. So she was um, placed in a care facility, and almost immediately she just blossomed. It's like a butterfly just broke out of a cocoon, and she just became this completely different person. She, was, she had friends. She was all over the place. And I remember distinctly those two sisters-in-law said, I wish we had done this years ago. But they didn't know what they didn't know because, of course, this was the first time they were going through this experience. And the reason why I, I emphasize that in the book and when I'm counseling people is because dementia is definitely one of the um, best examples of um, a disease where the more stimulation somebody gets, the more activities they're given, the more enriched their lives will become because if they are at home and they're inactive, they just kind of wither away and, and pull their heads in like a turtle and um, actually end up having less quality of a life. So we saw that in our family. I have seen that in hundreds of other families. So um, that's one of the reasons why I emphasize that with cognitive impairment, brain disease, uh, stimulation and activity, music, exercise, um, it's possible to offer that at home, but you need to do it at home. And a lot of these care facilities, they offer that on a regular schedule. And I've seen people just, you know, kind of come out of, I'll call it hibernation, yes. um, when they're in the right environment. Lisa so, Skinner, our, our guest on the program. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Finish. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I, um, I, I can just think of so many examples of where families didn't realize that that was the case until they actually made the placement and saw the significant changes in their loved one and said, wow, I never would have thought. Well, you and talk was, about that. Yeah, I was just going to say, you, you talk about that, and time is going by so quickly. Lisa Skinner, our guest on the program. The book is Not All Who Wonder, Need to Be Lost, Stories of Hope for Families Facing Alzheimer's and Dementia. 
Her website is allseniorssafeandsound.com. The book, of course, available at Amazon. I'll give you that before we wrap up here in a couple of minutes. You, you bring that point home, and another point as well in the chapter in the book, Old Lang Syne, and we've only got a couple minutes left. So briefly tell us that story, uh, how someone was reached by, by music and reached by a caring community where he lived, and that's why it's so important to choose that right community, isn't it? That's one of my favorite stories in the book, and it is an absolutely true story. The man was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, and he was put in assisted living. And the, um, he was kind of overwhelmed by the tasks of daily living, and he wasn't um, getting enough help. Basically, he um, just withdrew, and he and uh, they ended up building a memory care wing next door. And the lady who was running the memory care wing went over to assisted living to assess the residents who may be more appropriate for memory care. And she found him in his room, curled up in a fetal position. And um, they honestly thought that he was just rapidly declining. And she recognized that he wasn't. So they moved him over to memory care, put him in the program, and he hadn't spoken for a really long time. And one of their regular programs was music, because music is known to trigger memory. So he was um, at this little music concert that they were having, and they, uh, whoever the entertainer was was singing Old Lang Syne. This gentleman happened to be a, a World War II veteran. And as soon as that music started playing, he started belting out the words. And that was truly, honestly, the very first time the man had spoken in a very long time. And he continued to improve. Now, I don't want people to get the wrong idea that this illness um, is reversible or people can recover from it. This was just really a misdiagnosis where they thought the man was literally declining. Uh, but in this particular case, his behavior was um, due to inactivity. Yes. Once they put him in the right environment, he became alive again. It was the most incredible thing I've ever seen. And you talk about how it's so important the environment matters, that all the Metro care facilities are not created equal. I'm going to take about 30 seconds here at the end because I think this is important, as are so many topics in the book. You talk about establishing a relationship with your loved one's doctor. Talk about the significance of that. The doctor, uh, the family members, I think, and the, um, the, their primary caregiver really need to uh, be on the same page and um, almost like partner with the care plan. So I think it's very important important for family members to keep the doctors informed um, or the, the care facility keep the doctors informed. And most of them do a really good job of keeping the doctors informed. But I think that is really important because the care is, um, you know, the, to achieve the highest quality and the most enriched lifestyle, it's really a partnership between, um, you know, the loved ones, the family members, the caregivers, and the doctors. You know, as the old saying goes, it takes a village, yeah, right? Exactly, and exactly. And I think this is a good example where it really does take a village. It's a really important book, Not All Who Wander Need Be Lost, Stories of Hope for Families Facing Alzheimer's and Dementia. The author is Lisa Skinner. She's been our guest on the program. Her website is allseniorssafeandsound.com. Book, of course, available at Amazon. And if you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on directly to Lisa's website. Lisa, so much more that we only scratched the surface of this. An excellent job. You're helping once again, many people, as you have throughout your 20-some uh, year career, thank you so much for being with us on the program. Well, thank you for having me. It was an honor and a pleasure.
Thank you so much for being with us and sharing that information. The book is Not All Who Wander Need Be Lost, Stories of Hope for Families Facing Alzheimer's and Dementia. Lisa Skinner, the author and our guest. Her website is allseniorsafeandsound.com. Also available at Amazon. Information by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program after these messages. <laughs> 